Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the limitations with Cloud Firestore. In my previous tutorial, I've talked about what is Cloud Firestore, how to get started with it. I've shown you the console where you can add the data in based on collection and document structure. Also, you can check the user status, write security rules, all sort of things I've shown in my previous tutorial. And this tutorial is mainly focused on what sort of limitations you have to live with when you use Cloud Firestore. So let's start with the free limitations. One of the best thing with Cloud Firestore is if you want to get started with a product, either your mobile application for Android, iOS, or even if for your website, then you do not need to pay the cost for it initially because there is a free limit for everything, either you read, write, or even store data. The moment you cross that limit, then you can pay as you go. So the free limitation is the store data that should not cross one GB and document read should be limited to 50,000 read per day. Now, what does that mean? This is really important to understand that if you read from a collection and if that collection is having 100 documents and if you do not put a limit in your query, then that collection is going to give you that 100 documents and that's going to cost you 100 reads. 20,000 write is like for every collection you can have a document. Now one thing to notice here is like either there's a limitation for 1 MB so you write to your entire 1 MB data or you just change 1 KB of data. That's going to cost you 1 write per document. So that's where I say that with Cloud Firestore, the NoSQL database, if you want to have redundancy, it's still good rather than maintaining the references. But yes, there are certain scenarios where maintaining reference is good. So it's not like always you should have redundancies. And the bandwidth limitations is 10 GB. Now let's talk about the collection limit. So with Firebase, the structure that it follows is a collection and a document, which means that every collection can store document. Collection in turn doesn't store any information. It can only store document, which store all sort of information which you have provided as a key value pair. One limit here is no collection can have other collection. Collection can only store document. That document in turn can have sub collection. So you can have a chain of collection, document, then again collection, then document. So by this way, you can have a chain, but no two collections together or no two documents together. Every collection ID should be unique. Also, there is a limit for 1500 bytes for the document ID. And one of the most important thing to remember is if you are trying to increase the hierarchy by adding sub collections, like you have collection, then document, that document is in turn pointing to some other sub collection that is having document and that again in turn points to some other sub collection. So you can have this chain limited to 100 sub collections only. You cannot go beyond 100 sub collections. Now let's talk about the document limit. So document are the smallest individual unit you could save, which is store information on Cloud Firestore. This is the place where you store all sort of information. And one thing to remember, Cloud Firestore doesn't support multimedia. So if you're trying to upload images, if you convert to string, add string here, it's well and good. But if you want to upload image or audios, videos, PDF, all sort of things, then you have to upload it on the cloud storage get the link and then you can store that link on the Cloud Firestore in the particular document. Again, the same rules applied here also, no document can be inside another document. The documents has to be inside collections only. Each document should have unique ID in that particular collection. So inside another collection, you can again have the same document ID, but for that collection, you cannot have 
same document ID once again. The collection ID is again limited to 1500 bytes and the max size for this is limited to 1 megabyte. Also, the field name that you are going to give it like you store it in a key value pair internally this got stored in a JSON format but the moment you gave it to the console or through your Android or IS SDK they form a key value pair. So the key size cannot cross 1500 bytes. Also the depth for the field like an array or map is limited to 20. It cannot go beyond 20. Now let's see other limitations which are important to know. The API request size. This is nothing but when you hit the API, the request that you are going to get that is limited to 10 MB. Also, on a single database, because the moment you create project, you get the database. So on that database, every second, there's a limitation of 10,000 writes only. And if you are having this on multiple platform, Android, iOS, or even web, then there could be a chance that you may have many concurrent users. So Cloud Store supports that. It supports around 10 lakh concurrent users. Also, the indexed entry for each document is limited to 40,000. So it's not like one MB is the deadline. It's even like you cannot have the indexed element beyond 40,000. So these are the limitations with Cloud Store, which are very important to know before getting started with Cloud Store. However, you will not come through these limitations because in most of the scenarios, if you have documented it well, the structure is well, then there is chance that you will not cross these limitations. Also, one of the best advantage which you'll get with Cloud Store is that for mobile application, especially when you have a connection, you can do all sort of operation. How about if you do not have connection? So many of the Android applications have this local databases where they need to manually create the local database, sync it, and then all sort of pain they have to take care. But with Cloud Store, the moment you use the Android or iOS SDK, you get this capability by default enabled for you, which based on your wish, you can disable it. But this is enabled by default where you do not need to manage the local database. If user is performing any sort of operation when user is not connected to internet, then they can still read, write, or delete the documents. And later on, when they come online, this will be synced back to the Cloud Files tool. So that's it in this video. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can use Cloud Files tool in our Android application. So before that, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, then do hit the subscribe button so you not miss that video. Also, if you like this video, then do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Thank you and stay tuned for the upcoming video.